You ever thought color, shapes, sound, smell, aroma, touch, taste? This is all called sensory marketing. And we all know, as a matter of fact, we'll talk about today, they can all help your ability to persuade and influence, and they can all hurt your ability to persuade and influence. Let's get into it. Maximize your influence. Kurt Mortensen is the author of Persuasion IQ, Laws of Charisma, and the best-selling book, Maximum Influence. Welcome back. Good to have you here. This is Podcast 531 to teach you the power to influence and persuade, to give you more tools to make you a power persuader. Now, as far as the world is concerned, I want you to keep your eye on politics. You're probably sick of it. Both sides are very guilty of using way too many emotions and not enough logic. Keep your eye on that. In fact, look at different news stations, different websites that lean different directions. You'll be amazed on how the same thing has two different viewpoints. It might give you an aneurysm, but it'll give you a better perspective on persuasion and influence and what's happening out there in the world. Don't want to spend too much time on that because I think we're already kind of sick of things like that. But let me get into the geeky article of the day. All right. This is a combination of the Journal of Consumer Research and the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. I read them so you don't have to. It's called sensory marketing. Marketers using senses to drive more sales. Isn't that amazing? And this talks about the smell of cinnamon. Ha <laughs> ha. Little did you know that smell is a big part of the influence process because we've talked a lot about these subconscious triggers. So one study found that the smell of cinnamon is subconsciously linked to feelings of warmth, which increases the attractiveness in the perception of a, I think it was a heat cushion of all things, right? Just the smell of cinnamon, a little potpourri, a good smell, it makes a huge difference. Another study found that the smell of leather in a shoe store, and this was from spray, it wasn't even a real smell, it was synthetic, it led to more purchases. And of course, Nike, you already know this, when they use a specific scent, you've probably smelled it, it increases sales 80%. Wow. In fact, I saw a study once that showed when people were near the cell of a Cinnabon store, that's also cinnamon, remember the feelings of warmth, that they were more likely to donate to a charity. Here is why. We have a section of the brain called the limbic system. Pretty much all our senses go through an emotional part of our brain. And what happens is our limbic system is involved in memories and emotions. That's why smell has the power to trigger emotional memories. You probably can smell a perfume or cologne of an old boyfriend or girlfriend, and zing, you're back. A lot of memories, good or bad, and that can make a big difference. Here's the main thing I want you to take away. We feel faster than we think because we have this rational part of our brain. It's slower. It requires more energy, and a lot of times our brain doesn't like that. Our brain will choose the easiest path, and when you feel an emotion, the feelings, the memories, the thoughts, they all come back. That's why sensory marketing is really interesting as far as what it can do for you. So I want to focus on sensory marketing. I call these association triggers. one of the 12 laws of persuasion. And within the law of association, smells, aroma is a big factor of influence. And we need to talk about that and make sure you understand that you're probably breaking some rules here. So let's talk about this sensory marketing. This is where, if you're in marketing, sales persuasion, where you can engage multiple senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, taste, to create a strong emotional connection, a subconscious trigger to consumers to influence their purchasing decisions. It works because our human senses are deeply connected to our memory, emotion, perception, our buying habits, what we like, what we don't like. There's a power here we can tap into. Sight. Most of us are very visual. Visual elements are the most dominant sense in the market because we can process that image faster than text, colors, shapes, and designs. It's quick, it's easy, and fast. I mean, Coca-Cola always uses red in its branding, which psychologically associates itself with excitement and energy. Let's talk about Disneyland, Disney World. The Cinderella Castle is in the middle of the Magic Kingdom. It's the iconic symbol that sets the tone for fairy tale land, fairy tale adventures, people coming to the park, that it's a new world. It's there for a reason. Then there's sound. Sound effects 
mood, perception of time, it affects decision making, do we feel comfortable, do we feel stressed? The tone and speed of the music can affect the shopping environment and how long we shop. Starbucks puts music in their stores to create a relaxing atmosphere that you enjoy and you stick around to buy more. Back to Disney. The moment you step on Main Street, there is music, there are tunes. Then you go to the big attractions like It's a Small World that have very famous songs. There is music in every part of any Disneyland park you go to. And we've been focusing on smell. We know it's linked to memory and emotion. We talked about positive smells and negative smells. If you've ever been to an Abercrombie and Fitch, it's very famous as its signature scent throughout the whole stores, creates brand identity, and makes the shopping experience more memorable. And I even have to tell you on Disney on this one, you know that they're pumping out the smell of fresh baked cookies, vanilla. They have hidden machines throughout the store that put out the smells to encourage purchasing of food. Touch, I know we're going to be careful. There are podcasts in the archives on this. Handshake is touch. And that's person to person. But when someone can touch a product, interact, they feel more of an ownership with the product. Apple does this with their products. Touch them, use them, see them. They're out there to play with. Disney has attractions like Build Your Own Lightsaber, where they incorporate getting involved. That touch or tactile sense that people have That can get them more engaged and more persuaded. And there's taste. You know what a taste test does. Gets people involved, gets them engaged. They start listening. Costco's real famous for that. We don't even have to go into Disney Foods. They're big turkey drumstick. They pump the smell out. There are Mickey-shaped pretzels. There's churros. There's a lot of different things. Some have a free taste. Some are just there to smell, to want you to get a taste. Hey, they're good in their marketing. So use them. Our focus, of course, is on smell. That also creates a positive environment. Subconscious triggers that emotional sense. It can stimulate appetite, grab attention, influence a perception of value, increase brand recall and loyalty. There's a lot of benefits for using any type of sensory marketing. Because smells can help or hurt your ability to influence. Again, most people don't even think about it. Again, it's our olfactory system. It's a primitive part of our brain. And wow, it just goes fast. You smell something, you're there. And so you could use this to your benefit. But be careful, it can hurt too. Because if you smell a perfume and cologne or fresh cut grass or the beach, any of those things could be a positive or a negative thing depending on how you use it. And the great thing is it requires little conscious attention. It just happens. That's the power of association triggers. Another great example is supermarkets. They pump in that fresh baked bread smell into the supermarket. I saw a study that showed that it increased sales 300%. We know a lot of burger places, they'll pump that smell out. It makes a big difference when you smell that. I know Victoria's Secret uses potpourri to augment their customers' feelings. Car dealers use new car smells. Even when it's an old used car, they still use it. There's a company in Japan that did research that found that citrus smells in the morning had rousing effects, floral scents in the afternoon encouraged concentration, and woodland scents at the end of the day to help relax employees. Isn't that interesting? Even larger music parks will pipe in certain scents at certain times to trigger different responses. They've studied these smells. They know these smells. They can be very, very helpful to you. And it can change attitude. Now, remember, that can be positive or negative. Negative smells can have the opposite effect. We even know perfume and colognes can rate you as more attractive. Now, we have to talk about offensive odors, and that's the thing. You don't know. It might be in your office. It might be on your body, but that can trigger negative feelings. In fact, they did a little test. They had people come in, and they were testing political slogans, right? They were going back and forth. And what they didn't know is that they were pumping offensive odors into the room. (laughs) I'm not sure... Where they got these odors, we don't need to go down that road. But hey, offensive odors. I don't know how they determined that, but I guess most people didn't like it. But when that offensive odor was in the room, it hurt the evaluations and ratings for the slogans. And they've done this with other things, too. Offensive odors do hurt your ability to persuade and influence. And again, the challenge is you just don't know that these odors are around you or in your office or in your company because you're around them all day and you're past that and you don't even probably smell it anymore. We know that bad smells do the opposite. Rotten food, body odor, cigarette smoke, garbage, mold, 
sewage are all top of the list for triggering wrong feelings. Some even complain about certain cleaning products and that strong chemical smell it could leave. Some love the smell of chlorine, some hate the smell of chlorine. And there are some cultures that love the smell of, let's say, stinky tofu, but that's nasty somebody else. The fruit of durian smells really bad, but a lot of people still like the flavor. People visiting the United States, the complaint of the smell of fast food or, or that fried food, fried oil smell can bother people if they're not used to it. Here's a fascinating one. The smell of Windex help people be more generous with their money and time towards the habitat of humanity. Cleaning aromas can help people be more honest and fair. In fact, one study revealed that it actually encouraged people to clean up. So they bring all these students in a room and they're retaking a test or something like that. They gave them a reason to be there. And it was morning time and they gave everyone a muffin. Ah, how nice is that? No, there's probably another motive there. But this is what happened. They gave them these muffins, which were cooked and designed to just crumble everywhere. You open the saying, I mean, crumbs everywhere. It just made a big mess. And that was by design. And they just want to see if they'd clean it up. And they found when they put a cleaning solution smell in the air, just a subtle smell in the air, they were three times more likely to clean it up. This is something most people don't think about, but that aroma, that smell really matters. Stores that had a ambient aroma, as they called it, people shopped longer in the store. They stayed longer. They found that certain smells increased attention and reaction time in driving simulations. When people were given an MRI and there was a pleasant smell, people had less stress. All right, Kurt, how do we apply this? What does this mean? This is nice information, but you have to apply this. Again, when someone comes to your home or your office, what do they smell? What do they smell on you? Here's something interesting that you can apply right now. Perfume and cologne hurt your ability to persuade. Now, you're rated more attractive, might help in a nightclub, but not face-to-face. Now, you want to smell like you've taken a clean shower, but it's a big complaint you're wearing way too much perfume and cologne. Just like I said earlier, you don't even know your own stink. Your own smell or too much of a good smell could have the same effect. You don't know. What does your office smell like? What does your department smell like? What does your website smell like? All right, we haven't fixed that one yet, but someday that's probably going to happen. And it comes down to a lot of times is expectations. When you go to a dental office or a dentist office or even a hospital, there's certain things that you expect to smell, and you need to manage those expectations. If you went to a florist shop, obviously there's certain things you want to be smelling. If you're going to sell your house, you bake bread. Right? It's that simple. Why? Bread, I'm home. It makes a huge difference. Because if you went into a home and you knew it was perfect for you and you were going to buy it but it reeked of, sorry for this, cat urine, it would have a bad association trigger. Even though logically you knew you could change out the carpets, you could fix the smell, we would have a bad association trigger. It matters. You might want to bake cookies or bread or something where it has a homey smell. It makes a big difference. Ask any real estate agent that's selling a lot. Not just anyone, I guess, but a high-end real estate agent, they will tell you the exact same thing. How else could you apply this? Well, if you know an annoying person, you don't want them to hang around anymore, uh, offensive odor. <laughs> Yet I'm not sure we get offensive odors. I'll let you Google that. Not quite sure on that one, but it matters. You're trying to get rid of somebody, a bad smell. I mean, think about the smell of movie popcorn and how it draws to you and it triggers all those feelings and sensations you want it versus if somebody burns popcorn, Man, that just ruins everything and it just permeates the whole office building or the whole house. It has the opposite feeling. So be careful of the smells. It's real. In fact, one of the number one complaints at a convention, you know in a convention when you go through the, the different booths and you talk to different people, it's bad breath. That's an annoying odor. You don't know that you don't know. You might have bad breath. Be very careful and it's so easy to fix. Take a shower every once in a while. That'll be helpful. What are the expectations of your customer and client? When they come into an office, or even they open a box for your company, you have to think that through. This is real. Smells, aromas matter. Think about it and apply that. Now it's time for the ninja. Let's hear the sound, ninja go. All right, we love the ninja sound, even though it's probably not a ninja sound, but we use it as a ninja sound just for fun. The ninja is beach body. Hopefully you've heard that name before. If you've ever seen any late-night infomercials, it's Beachbody. They're the ones that do P90X, Insanity, oh, 21 Day Fix, just to name a few. 
man, take a look at their marketing. Take a look at their infomercials. They are doing very, very well. Infomercials are interesting. First of all, infomercials are on late at night because your resistance is down. That's where you're like, oh, wow, it cuts through a shoe. I need one of those. <laughs> and also understand that infomercials have a 90% failure rate. Most infomercials fail. Think about that. So if you see an infomercial over and over and over again, you know it's successful, and it's a great study on persuasion. You're going to notice a call to action probably every 12 to 14 minutes. You're going to notice social validation with the testimonials. You're going to see the law of contrast, the way they adjust the perception of pricing. It's a great school of persuasion because they've gone through it. In fact, most infomercials don't even make money if you just buy the basic item. When you call up, they're going to try to upsell you. There's a whole science behind this. So not only the infomercial is the reason Beachbody is a ninja, they do very well in a commercial I saw. So they have this powder. It's a meal replacement powder. It's once a day, and it's very expensive. It's well over $100. And, of course, people's knee-jerk reaction is, well, I can go to the supermarket and buy this, and Beachbody doesn't want people to make that comparison. Because with price, if someone says it's too expensive, it's your fault as a persuader because you haven't built the value. So they have this great formula, this powder. It's in a little bag. The packaging doesn't even look that expensive, but they pay top dollar for it. Of course, you have the social validation, people swearing by it and how much weight they've lost. So they do a great thing using the law of contrast, which adjusts the perception of value. So they have one of their exercise guys. He's at a supermarket at the cash register, and someone comes up and buys something. The first person, I think he's mocking him because he's buying Cheetos and other stuff. It's a big guy. Then this nice-looking lady comes up, and, of course, her cart's full of different things, healthy things. She obviously works out, and she's healthy. And they go, oh, flaxseed. So every little item is worth, like, 10 bucks, and one's 20 bucks, and one's 5 bucks. And he just keeps going through all these different things. And the bill, I don't even remember the bill. Let's say the bill's $1,000. But it was a huge thing for all these healthy things. And she's like, whoa. And he kind of leans over and says, you want to know a secret? All these things are in this meal replacement drink. And so they've taken a $1,000 and they've down to $100. Now it's a bargain. So they do really well in adjusting the perception of pricing because, you know, a bag of powder is not worth that much. But now, hey, I've got $1,000 of nutrients in here. I'm going to get this in my drink. I'm going to lose weight. And that makes a huge difference in that perception of pricing. So the ninja today goes to Beachbody, not only for their infomercials, but for their ability to contrast the perception of price. They do a very, very good job. And I encourage you to watch some infomercials. <laughs> Be careful you hide your credit cards, I guess. But a great study on influence and persuasion. If there again and again, you know it's working and it makes a huge difference. And last final bonus safety tip. When an infomercial does fail, they don't just leave it alone. They bring it back into the production studio and they add social validation. They add more testimonials. A, from people you might know. And they made it work. You're like, wait a minute. If they can do it, I can do it. They don't look that sharp. They do that on purpose because you're like, wait a minute. Especially for the financial type infomercials or the real estate type infomercials, they tend to do that. And the other thing they do very well, too, is the contrast. The before and after picture is amazing. You watch that next beach body infomercial. The before picture, they're black and white. Their belly's hanging over. They're slouched. They're not smiling. The background's ugly. And this is all subconscious. You really don't notice until you really try to notice. Then the after picture, they obviously lost weight, right? But it's now in color and their posture's better and the background's better and they're smiling. That before and after picture makes a huge difference. So that's our show for today. Maximize your influence. High content to give you some more tools. You can find us at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. You can find us on Facebook on Maximize Your Influence. Appreciate you listening. Use these skills. Let us know if there's anything you want us to change or adjust to the show. You can email me at Kurt at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. We're going to continue on by popular demand, InfluenceUniversity.com. Go to Maximize Your Influence, click on Podcast 530, or go to InfluenceUniversity.com slash special where you can get a lifetime membership for $97. This is pretty much everything I've done from audios, videos, books, archives, library, podcasts, all in one spot. You can take the Structured 52-week program, or you can pick and choose 
the areas that you want to work on. Check it out, and you'll even enjoy a free coaching session. But again, master these skills. Go out and persuade with power.